Mr. Hendon's here this year, 41st of Fame, Control Society Convention. Uh, Susan Moss is a, not only a, an author, but her truly significance here, she's a recovered breast cancer patient. And contrary to what uh, we've seen, uh, she chose not to have any surgery. We can certainly talk about her own merits of uh, prophylactic, uh, destroying and cutting down body parts at, at some other time. Uh, but Susan has been here many years, uh, which is a, a testimonial to the fact that uh, she successfully treated her breast cancer. She's written a couple of books, and she's here to, to share that information, the knowledge, of the journey that she took. Thank you, Frank. Actually, I had breast and uterine cancer at the same time, and that was 22 years ago. So, uh, I, uh, my subject today is keep your breasts. Did Angelina Jolie make a reasonable choice? So, yeah, I'm going to do interactive. So, I'm going to give you a chance to yell and scream. <laughs> so, here's my books. Uh, Keep Your Breasts is the first one I wrote, and it came out in 1994. That was the first edition, and it is now in three languages and sixth edition and revised. And uh, I contrast my uh, MOTEP program, which is a 20-point health program covering physical, mental, spiritual, diet, exercise, visualization, group therapy, laughter, healing relationships, and helping others. There's 20 points, you go on it. Marathon Olympic means you really go on it. And you devote yourself to getting well. The body has magic powers. It has a whole program as to how to heal cancer. So all you do is have to support it in every single way. And often a year and a half to two years before you get cancer, there's a big traumatic stress emotional stress, anger, resentment. Um, so it does take a while to get cancer and it does take a while to get well. However, when my doctor found two tumors in my body, breast and uterine, at the same time, uh, he wanted me to see a surgeon and he started calling me every day, see a surgeon, and I said no. And I did that for two reasons. Number one, I had past healing experience with a lump in my neck. I'm also an artist. Uh, I was using big vats of Roplex, which is the base for all acrylics, uh, to do big commissions like four 10-foot paintings for the Bonaventure Hotel. I developed a, a lump in my neck after using this uh, Roplex for about five years and um, went to UCLA as an outpatient, got a biopsy. They said it's right on the verge of cancer. And if you do not stop using this material, you will have cancer. And that's when I started reading. And my uh, dad actually was into alternative health in the 50s, so he was way ahead of his time. And he bought me a juicer. And my program was very simple at that time. It only com composed of three elements. Number one was uh, detox with the carrot juice. Number two was running on the beach, but of course I couldn't run. I, could, I was so weak, um, pale, and I was losing weight um, so that I could only kind of walk and then slowly build up with the help of an architect friend. And then visualization, uh, O. Carl Simonton uh, recommends that. And uh, this is how I did it. I would turn on rock music real loud, and I would visualize a uh, white coated men going down with a rope, and they would tie the rope around the lump, and I would get it out to the beat of the music. And I would actually see the lump coming out. And I did that twice a day. Well, the doctor said if I didn't get rid of the lump in a year, he would operate and take it out. And uh, I got rid of it in a year, and I got my health back. So I did have past healing experience. Now, Keep Your Breast uh, tells of the, when I got breast and uterine cancer, I expanded the program to the 20 points. And this, contra and this book contrasts my healing naturally
to my friend Kimberly, who I dedicate all my lectures to, who was 34, found the lump herself, did every single medical treatment, followed by a funeral at 38. So uh, please read this book. It's full of good advice. That was hard won. And um, whoop, I went too far. And then the follow-up book uh, that came out a few years ago is um, Survive Cancer. And this book uh, tells of people who use my MOTEP program for many different types of cancer or figured it out for themselves, some after medical treatment failure. And these people are so courageous and they're so inspiring. And uh, I interviewed a fellow in Japan who had um, done the medical treatment. He was a scientist and he couldn't stand the chemo. He couldn't stand the smell, so he went up on the roof of the hospital to get some air, and they thought he was going to jump off, so they sent him home, and, uh, <laughs> and he figured it out. And how he did it is really amazing, and now he travels the world talking about how he healed himself and tries to help others, which is part of my program. So. Um, I like to uh, do interactive, so we're going to have an interactive uh, lecture now. <laughs> okay, uh, you agree with the statement, uh, raise your right hand and say agree. If you disagree, raise your left hand and say I disagree. Um, yes, Angelina Jolie did made a reasonable choice. Disagree. Oh, only one agreement? <laughs> All right. Now I'm going to tell you a story that might change your mind. Um, I, being an artist, I, I went to this big art gallery in Beverly Hills, and uh, it was a great opening. Lots of celebrities, and uh, it was really fun. I was having a good time. And uh, this fellow came up to me and said, Brad Pitt wants to meet you. And I said, really? <laughs> well, that sounds great. I'll, uh, of course, I'll meet Brad Pitt. And so he was up there on the second floor looking down at me. So I went up and, and I met Brad Pitt, or I should say he met me. <laughs> and um, I do think Angelina made a reasonable choice in Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we'll get back to <laughs> That was fun. Okay, is this true or false? If it's true, raise your right hand and say true. If it's false, raise your left hand and say false. Amputation of the breast results in both lowering the risk and a high cure rate for breast cancer because without a breast, you can't have breast cancer. That's right. You're all right, it's false. So how did I know that's false? Uh, I got that message very strongly with my friend Kimberly, as I say, that's in the first book. Uh, she found a lump herself. Three days later, she had the mastectomy, and guess where the cancer showed up? Same place in the chest wall where the breast used to be. So that's when I woke up from the Santa Claus notion, is what I call it, that cutting off the breast will cure you of breast cancer. And certainly it won't prevent cancer because cancer is systemic, as I'll show you here. This is normal blood. This is what blood looks like when you're nice and healthy and happy and going about your business and have no big huge stresses and no problems with your food or your or, um, anger, resentment or any of that and you exercise. So here's where your blood's deteriorating. Notice how the white blood cells are inundating and the red blood cells are sticking together. So here you see that all your blood looks different. 
So cutting off part of your body is not going to change that at all. Here's an extreme example. And uh, Dr. James Prevatera, who wrote the uh, introduction for both my books, says that blood becomes sticky. So here you can see an uh, extreme case. And it's also uh, the blood charts are in my book, Survive Cancer, where the blood, red blood cells are sticking together and the white blood cells are inundating, trying to heal that. OK, true or false? Angelina Jolie was told by doctors that a BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation results in an 87% risk of breast cancer and a 50% risk of ovarian cancer. Are these statistics true in general or false? Raise your right hand and say true or raise your left hand and say false. Well, we have a big mixture there. This is false because what they did um, a little underhandedly is they chose a family that all had cancer to come up with these statistics. And the worst scenario. And also, the other argument I have about this, these statistics is the test has only been out for 17 years. So what if you gave this test to a 20-year-old? She'd only be 37 now, so they have not a clue of what the real statistics are for lifetime risk. True or false, BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes found by Marie Claire King are dangerous genes. True or false? That's right. BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are repair genes for your DNA. If you inherit a mutated gene from one of your parents, which I probably did because my aunt had breast cancer, and, and they're Eastern European on that side, uh, you, uh, you have two of every gene in your body. In other words, you're diploid. So that means you have one from your mother and you have one from your father. So if there's one gene that's mutated and can't do its job properly, you have another gene that takes over. So to me, this is like terrifying women because they have one mutated gene. Don't they know that you have a copy that takes over? And if the other gene is damaged also or missing, you have other genes in your body that will take over. And they are not quite as efficient, but they'll do their job the best they can. True or false? Right hand, left hand. The ATM gene also influences cancer and is, has a part in the $5 billion, billion dollar gene test industry. ATM gene, true or false? That's true, we do have an ATM gene. But uh, the $5 billion, I don't know about. Um, this test to me is like totally phony because it's not taking into account your other genes. Five. Almost half the women who are, who are diagnosed with BRCA1 or BRCA2 mutation will opt for a prophylactic mastectomy and or ovary removal resulting in early surgical menopause. True or false? That's true, 38%. This is a, a big tragedy. And I wish these women would read my books before they made this mistake. Six, true or false, if you are at risk by carrying gene mutations, you have only three options, which is what the medical system is going to tell you. A, surveillance, mammograms, and MRIs every six months. B, chemo prevention with carcinogenic drugs like tamoxifen that cause like uterine cancer, cataracts, 
endometrial cancer, or C, surgery for removal of breasts and ovaries. True or false? False, right. You're a very good audience. You're doing great. <laughs> okay, so this is the uh, MOTEP program that I heal myself on. And it com it's 20 steps, uh, visualization, semi-vegetarian diet um, to detox. And a lot of junk came out of my body. Uh, spent a lot of time in the bathroom. And it's amazing. Uh, under eating slightly for a period of a month, fresh juice carrots, one hour of vigorous exercise five or six days a week, sauna to raise the temperature that kills the cancer cells, one, rubbing one half fresh cut lemon on my breast lump twice a day, eight hours sleep and a nap, elimination of all pills and drugs, even prescription that aren't life essential, Elimination of caffeine and alcohol, group therapy. I think the group therapy really helped me a lot. Making a point to help and encourage others. Giving love to others and giving it to myself generously. Smiling and laughing as much as possible, inspired by Norman Cousins. Inducing in myself a feeling of well-being no matter what my actual circumstances were. Deciding no matter how much stress I was under, I was not going to take it out on my body. I think this is really important. Then vitamin supplements, asking for help and support. You have to believe in your program. You have to believe in the body. The ability to heal yourself is within your, your very cells, in your whole system. You have to give it support. If you have doubts that you can heal yourself, I doubt that you're going to get well. A strong determination to survive. Now, I found that uh, working with other cancer patients or listening to them, sometimes the will to live is not as strong as it should be. I think uh, it all starts with the will to live. And I know we all go through these traumas. I know Lorraine Rosenthal, who I'm so humbly appreciative of organizing this conference, uh, is going through a lot of trauma right now. And I know we all do, but we can get well. And so you have to decide that you want to live. And in my book, Survive Cancer, I give you a lucky exercise, and what you do is you say, I am lucky, I have, and then you fill in the blank 10 times. So uh, find out why you want to live. Write it down. Write it down 10 times. True or false, men have mutations of BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes that might lead to prostate cancer. Is that true or false? Raise your right hand for true left hand. Nobody knows? It's true. So men have it too. And now they want to take the prostate out. Is that the way to do it? No. OK, uh, true or false, mutations of the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes have also been linked to colon, pancreatic, pancreatic and skin melanoma cancer. It's true. So why don't they advise women and men with mutations to have their skin removed? They won't die of cancer. True or false, major health decisions should be made from fear. Okay, everybody agrees with that. And yet, they're trying to scare people into these horrible, mutilating, quote unquote, prophylactic operations. And I hope that if anyone's thinking about it or knows anyone who's thinking about it, please think twice. Because I know what Angelina 
Jolie gets to be around my age, she's going to regret it. For one thing, she's going to have some kind of implants for her breasts, and they're going to give her enormous problems. And they might even lead to sickness, and they might even lead to death. True or false, prevention and healing from breast, prostate, and other cancers can be accomplished naturally. Disease cannot be cut out of the body. True. And uh, I want to kind of leave it at that. Um, you've heard how I healed. You've heard how others healed. You know how to heal. We all intrinsically have the healing power within ourselves to heal any disease, to heal any cancer. And thank you so much for listening.